And all I came out was I got stern with her. Now, do not go to school and tell your kids that your dad is Santa Claus. We don't need roads. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Uh, Mr. Allen, I'm actually going to start with you because as a kid who grew up on home improvement, I am kind of minorly freaking out that you're bringing Tim the Toolman Taylor back to the air. And I'm just sort of curious what it was like kind of slipping back into him. Was it easy? Did you kind of have to pause for a moment to bring him back? What was that moment like? It was a really clever idea until it got on the set. And then it, it, it was very uncomfortable. We've thought about this many times as a goop. Tim Taylor was kind of um, not as um, well-developed as Mike Baxter. And it was a very uncomfortable transition because I was having people write my character for me. And literally the first time I've done this, every now and then with Buzz Lightyear, I'll do it, but I said, like in movies, they said, my character would never say that. And I literally said this many times. Tim Taylor wouldn't say this. I'm not, sh it, it was really challenging to play both parts. Not as much fun as I thought it was going to be. And it, it, it turned out pretty cool, actually. I'm excited to, uh, to see the final product. I mean, but to that point, clearly you've had to let go of a show before. You've had to let go of a character before. What did you learn from the finale of Home Improvement? that prepared you for the finale of Last Man Standing? Nothing. Nothing. I don't like you now, and I don't like Chicago right now. I don't like anything. I don't want to end this show. The truth is he doesn't like finales to anything. No, I don't. I don't. I, none I don't, of us do. None of us like this. We really like this show. And it's, it, it's a grateful that we've got nine years. This is a year longer than Home Improvement. The last show of Home Improvement, would convince me to never end a show again because it was so sad. We couldn't get through that episode. It was constant tears, everybody looking at things, and it was a it was a hor it was a horrible experience. But, I, but I, isn't I, that I, what you no. want though? Like you you want it you you don't want to get to the point where you're happy to be walking away where no, the audience no. is going oh thank God. I mean like the fact that we're all bummed that you guys are leaving, I feel like is a good thing. It in in a in a yeah, but this this whole process of doing this during COVID during this pandemic has almost been like ripping the bandaid off very slowly. We we are filming the audience with uh, filming the show without an audience, which is is a surreal experience because a lot of what we do is about sharing it with with the people that are here and and getting their feedback. So that's been a strange adjustment, and you know it's a little sad that we can't do that. Well, I, I, that's so interesting. I didn't realize you guys were filming without an audience. I mean, it makes sense right. because one of my questions was going to be, I'd imagine one of the, the great things about filming with an audience is that when you tell a joke, you have an, a room full of people that erupt in laughter. Uh, so I guess now my question is, what is it like to be funny and then not hear a, a, an enormous amount of laughter? Is it, it kind uh, of... Uh, I, I, in, in, in my world, stand-up comedy is gone because of this rash, as my neighbor lady calls it. And... I missed that terribly, and I didn't realize this is more like theater experience combined with stand-up comedy, combined with doing a movie, this this old school television with an audience. And I didn't realize until we got we're eight into it how much I loved the Tuesday nights. I really loved. I loved. That's it. what we tape in front of an audience. We yeah. love. I loved it. We're getting we're getting good product. We got a really good crew around here that helps us. We've all we're professionals. You just do what you're told to do, and it's. We've had some really great shows. I, I don't know that Nancy's seen it. Some of the shows we've done are remarkably similar. There's an audience you weren't, aren't going to know because we do have we have a small group of audience members that are in. It looks like penalty, shower stalls. Shower <laughs> stalls. Like, if only you could see it. It looks like uh, oh, it's just like plastic plastic cubicles. booths. It's like a penalty box up in <laughs> for the bulls. It's just or the speaking black of box. which, you're a little too close. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just <laughs> weird. I gotta be honest. I, I know you guys are dealing with a lot with uh, COVID in this production, but n I think now more than ever, people need to be able to turn on this show and laugh. So I think now is the time that people are going to be most appreciating this show. So I, I really appreciate you guys so, uh, making so it happen. We. We're so grateful that we even get to be here yeah. to do this at all. I mean, it, given how much loss there has been, and it, it, this has just been a gift for us.
Well, it's a gift for us too to be able to see it. Um, I, I'm going to geek out with you for a second, uh, Mr. Allen, because I remember um, whenever my parents took me to go see Toy Story, uh, whenever it came out in theaters, and it was just a couple of days ago, I'm sure you know, was the 25th anniversary right. of the film's release. And we're now at a point where people who saw that movie as kids are passing it on to their kids. And I'm just sort of curious, when you look back, what you think of the legacy of Buzz Lightyear, of that film in your career, and the idea that being a part of something that's been passed on for generations now. I have, a, I've got to be honest with you, between uh, Tim D Toolman Taylor sometimes, every now and then, this time of year, Santa Claus, is that uh, to bring it up into a thing, we, one of my wife's friends at um, work, they had just had a baby and they're younger than my wife and the uh, babies, I mean, they're really young to me. Mm -hmm. And as a favor for that wife, we surprised her, her three-year-old is pushing the buzz like your button on his chest so much that the parents literally hate me. <laughs> and I called up as Buzz Lightyear on the phone, which uh, Hank's taught me that trick. If, if you have children shut their eyes and you can do the voice, it, it's magic. You get looking at you, it looks like some old man swallowed Buzz. But I called <laughs> this kid, three years old, and I said, you know, uh, Shannon, good. Star Command says it's your birthday. Well, good son. And it was on and on. And I said, I'll, I knew all these details about his life. And the mom said, and it, it chokes you up because she called back. She said, you should have seen... He was shocked. He, he put, covers the phone. It's Buzz Lightyear. And he took the <laughs> phone and it, it was the magic experience to be that part of anybody's life. Like anybody part when I first met uh, Mel Blanc did Bugs Bunny. Um, it, I think Elmer Fudd or all that. Whoever, it's, it's startling how, how much that means to you. So I'm, and I'm not the type of guy that takes compliments or any that I don't. I, I did it because I love the character. I didn't do it for the acclaim. That being said, it's it's a remarkable thing to be part of this. I'm not gonna lie, I'm almost 33 years old and I would love if you called me and talked to me as, <laughs> as Buzz Lightyear. Um, uh, it's funny you mentioned not loving compliments because that feeds into my next question. Uh, uh, Nancy, I was wondering if, uh, you know, whenever- uh, I cat, like compliments, so bring well, it. Well, I think, I think you are fantastic, but I was gonna give you the opportunity because oftentimes people, um, you know, are asked, you know, what are you going to miss most about the person that, you, that you're starring in the show with whenever it's the final season? But I was hoping to sort of flip that question. What is it about Tim Allen that you were going to miss the least? When the <laughs> uh, <laughs> that I'll miss the least. Oh, God. Well. Horrible uh, thing you said. I don't mm, like you anymore. Let's see. That I'll miss the least. least. Oh, uh, I should step out. <laughs> In terms of bodily function, easy. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I miss the least. I don't know. I, you know, I will miss you. So I don't know. Then miss the least. Uh, there is no. I, I've thoroughly enjoyed this experience and working with Tim. And uh, it just at this point, nine years, it's seamless. I mean, I, we come in. We we don't even need the. I hate. I don't want to insult the writers, but we don't even need the script. Almost, we're, right. we're Vanessa and Mike Baxter and. Uh, know where one begins and the other ends and it's nice and you know it's, it's i think it's a compliment to to your characters and who you are as actors that we feel like we know you when you come across people on the street do you find that just by nature of the show and how relatable the show is that people just they, they just feel like they know you personally we have we have a very very large loyal fan base and they do feel like they know us personally and they personally advocate for us, for the show. Uh, they think that I am Vanessa and that Nancy Travis does enjoy puns and knows how to make them, which I do not. Uh, <laughs> but also, no, I mean, I. <laughs> right. uh, but also um, people will see me and I'll look familiar to them. And, and that might be more of a, a comment about the way I look in front of you and the way I actually look in my life. But uh, I'll look familiar to that, familiar to them, and I'll say I'm on the show Last Man Standing. It's not until I say I play Tim Allen's wife that they say, "Oh yes, <laughs> yes." I I love that. I love, and as we wrap up, because I don't want to take up too much of your time, uh, Mr. Allen, you have a great moment uh, in the in the show where you talk about growing the beard and that you could play Santa Claus. And, and obviously it's a great uh, nod to the Santa Claus, which for many people is a holiday tradition. Everyone's dusting it off this time of year and they've been, they watch it every year for 20 years at this point. Um, I'm just sort of curious, would you ever allow that movie to be a part of your 
Christmas tradition? Like, would the Santa Claus ever yeah. play in the Allen household? It does, and it's a little, like, with kind of a little disagreement. We're putting our tree up this week, and my wife said, let's put on Santa Claus. I said, no, we, I can't do both. And she goes, what, you can't have it in the background? And even the kids that I would, no, we got to sit and watch and concentrate. Because I will <laughs> give, I'll say, well, this is a part when I did this. I constantly give it, and a quick story, my littlest one, we finally let her see it. It's a little confusing when she was, I think, four, four five, or six, and she's watching it, and then she kept turning around looking at me because I explained that I'm an actor, and we had permission from the real Santa Claus to go to the North Pole. As all this BS I was trying to get, and she eventually lost it. She started crying, sat in my lap, and she says, I'm sorry, you were so mean to that boy. You left Charlie at the house. And I go, it, it really isn't. And I was, it was a very difficult and all I came out was I got stern with her. Now, do not go to school and tell your kids that your dad is Santa Claus. And it, she's the first one I enjoy because it has memories. But the director and I are close friends. A lot of the cast were still close friends. So I can watch that. And, is you know, I'm OK. My worst problem is I'm very jealous about other people. All the other big stars are playing Santa. I cannot get I can't get through. I feel like Michael Keaton in Batman, you know. There was no Batman. He was he was Batman, and it's like Sean Connery, and and so I'm under my breath going, yeah, you can all pretend to be Santa, but there's you know there's just one. There's, there's only one. There's only one. Uh, Mr. Travis, Mr. Allen, I, seriously, I cannot tell you if you can't tell, I'm such a massive fan of both of yours, and I appreciate you taking. I know you got a lot going on, uh, and so I appreciate Thank you. you. Stopping Thank today you. and doing this interview. Hope you and your families are doing well. So bless you guys and, and have a great uh, have a great Christmas. Yeah, Merry Happy Christmas. Happy holidays to you. Right. All right, bye guys. <laughs> Well, we're going, we don't need roads.